Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the by far best selling game on the Switch with a whopping 62.9 million copies sold. That makes Mario Kart 8 the 5th best selling game of all time, so it's safe to say that there are quite a few opinions thrown around about this game. Add on the sheer amount of content contained within this package, and there's quite a lot to talk about. I have made a decent amount of videos on this game in the past, and it's safe to say that not all of my takes have been very popular. 16. The Bell Cop <laughs> So today, I thought it would be fun to concentrate my controversial opinions into one video. So we're going to be going over my Mario Kart 8 Deluxe hot takes. But of course, this won't just be me. As always, I've made a post on the community tab asking for your all's hot takes as well. So the first half of this video will focus on me and my takes, whereas the second half will focus on you all from the comments. Keep in mind that the ones I show from the community tab aren't necessarily the ones I agree with, just the ones I find to be the most interesting. And let's just say, you all left some pretty interesting ones. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into my first take. So as a fair warning, a lot of this video will boil down to this track good, and this track bad. Of course I'll add my reasoning, but a lot of my hot takes today are going to be track focused, though there are a few non-track ones we'll get to later. But to start off, I think we gotta talk about Neo Bowser City. The wonderful thing about this track is that no matter what opinion you have, it's pretty much a hot take. It seems like reception for this track in particular is split down the middle. Half the community hates it, whereas the other half loves it. And then there's the people in the middle who both sides hate. Pick a side, fence sitter. But which side do I fall on? Well, if you've seen any of my Mario Kart 8 videos before, you'd know, I hate this track, I hate this track, I hate this track. This is probably my least favorite base game Mario Kart 8 Deluxe track. Sunset Wilds is the only thing saving it from being the absolute worst in the game. But what about this track don't I like? Pretty much everything. The layout isn't really that fun, it's honestly just annoying. Since it's also raining on this track, it makes the road a bit slippery. That makes this one turn at the end, especially on 200cc, quite obnoxious, as it's super easy to fly off. And I know a lot of people will just say skill issue, but even if this turn didn't exist, I still wouldn't like the track due to how boring the rest of it is. I'm also just not much of a fan of the aesthetic. That's especially the case after the booster course pass, where they decided to add about 3 billion other city tracks to the game. Grant didn't Neo Bowser City looks a lot better than them, but it certainly didn't help. But alright, as I said, Neo Bowser City opinions are basically guaranteed hot takes. What do I think about some other tracks? Well, there are a decent few courses that the community finds to be really good that I only think are mediocre. The first of these would be Super Bowl Subway. Now right away, this is an improvement over Neo Bowser City. The aesthetic is far more interesting, and the track is a lot nicer to play on without slipping all over the place. My problem with it comes from me not loving the trains on the track. It's not the worst gimmick in the world, and I certainly understand why some people would like it, but I just think they can get a bit obnoxious at times. I also don't think the actual actual track layout itself is all that interesting. There are a few alternate routes, but I almost never feel the need to take them since they're so far out of the way. Another somewhat popular track that I don't really love is Singapore Speedway. Despite being a city track, a lot of people actually really enjoy this one. I will admit it's definitely one of the better cities, but that is a low bar. The aesthetic is good here, but man, I still don't like the layout, which is my main problem with these sort of tracks. There are definitely cool parts like the rooftop pool party, but there are also plenty of boring road segments that plague the other cities. So to me, this track is just mediocre. A lot of people praise it as one of the booster course passes best, Best, but to me, it's far from that title. Now, before we get to my most controversial of the track takes, why don't we take a bit of a positivity break? Remember, hot takes don't have to be negative things, just opinions that don't line up with the general consensus. I feel like for the most part, the tracks I enjoy are well loved by the community as well. One pretty glaring exception though seems to be Cheese Land. Now this one might not be too controversial and the cheese haters are just really vocal about it, but I think this track is fantastic. In fact, I've gone on record saying that this is one of the series' best retro tracks. I just find pretty much everything about this phenomenal. The layout is great with several shortcuts, holes in the road to trick on, and chain shops to act as obstacles. The aesthetic is also one of the best because it's just cheese. There are also some great background details of some pizza. Now with all that being said, why do people seem to dislike this track? Well, I believe it comes down to two things. First are a few of the changes this track made from the original. Like I said, this is a retro track, but it changed quite a bit from the original Cheese Land and Mario Kart Super Circuit. While both tracks are obviously based on cheese, the original specifically had the track taking place on the moon. The Mario Kart 8 version looks more desert-like in comparison, so some people take issue with that. To be honest though, I think both aesthetics are pretty good. Plus Mario Kart 8 has pizza, I love pizza. Pizza. Mario Kart 8's version also removed the rats from the track, but I'm fine with the chain shops as they were well too. The other reason people seem to dislike this is because of the ending shortcuts. If you get a mushroom, you can cut a lot of the track now using some glider ramps. Honestly though, I think that's really fun, and it makes the race exciting up until the very end, since you never know if someone might pass you. Okay, I think in this case that was pretty good. So overall, I'm a big Cheese Land fan. The world could never get me to hate you. Okay, positivity over, let's get back to hating. I've got two more tracks to talk about here, and my guess is that they're the most controversial of my track takes. So first off, we need to talk about DK Jungle. Hate this stupid track. I know this is a controversial one because everyone online always picks 
it whenever it shows up. I just really don't like playing on this thing. Now granted, it could be because I've never really played the Donkey Kong Country series, but at the same time, I haven't played much F-Zero and I still enjoyed both of its tracks. I don't even really know how to put this into words. I feel like we all just have that one track we dislike and can't really explain it. I guess I simply just find the layout and obstacles kind of annoying. Really detailed and constructive criticism. Way to go, me. But I'm sorry, DK fans. I just don't like this thing. Please don't kill me. Okay. But the final track I want to talk about is another popular one from Mario Kart 7. I've never been a huge fan of Music Park. <laughs> This is one of the series' most popular tracks, but I've never really loved it. It's not bad, I just don't think it's anything above a B tier. The idea of a music-based track is certainly pretty cool, but there are just some parts I don't love. Mainly this bit at the end with the jumping music notes. I find it a bit boring, especially if you decide to glide over it. The layout for the rest of the track isn't the most interesting thing either, having a pretty long stretch of not much interesting. This track is being hard carried by its music aesthetic because the way it incorporates it at certain parts is cool, but I just can't see this being one of the series' absolute best. But before we move to the comments, I did promise a few non-track hot takes. For these, I want to take a look at the roster. Now, this by itself was a pretty controversial topic for a long time, but I'd say after the additions of the Booster Course Pass, most people have grown to accept this as the best Mario Kart roster, although some Paratroopa fans may disagree. But while most people have grown on it, there are still quite a few people that dislike it and try to make their own. One of the most common cuts I see are to the Koopalings, so my hot take is that they're a great fit for the roster. I'd have the Koopalings any day over some of the spin-off characters like Geno or the Donkey Kong characters like Dixie Kong. I'm not saying those characters can't be on the roster, but I think the Koopalings are far more important to the Mario series. Each of them are also very distinct from one another, so I think they each deserve their individual slots. I would rather represent important characters from the mainline Mario games than branch off into spin-offs. It's gonna be so funny when they finally add a spin-off character and it's literally just Paper Mario. Oh, you know what on top of that? I also think the addition of Tanuki Mario was hilarious. Listen to how joyful he sounds. Tanuki! Yep, I am absolutely happy he got in over Ashley from WarioWare. The final roster thing I want to bring up has to do with the non-Mario characters. Now, I think this is probably another vocal minority situation, but I think the non-Mario characters are cool. Again, I'd honestly take them over Mario spin-off characters, I just think they're more interesting. But now it's time we take a look at the atrocious takes you all had in the comment section. We've got a pretty solid selection this time around, so I just say we go ahead and jump into it. We'll start with a bit of a tame one coming from JakeExtreme4108 who says, Rainbow Road 8 is one of the best Rainbow Roads in the franchise and is overhated for no reason. I heard that some people consider it to be the worst Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but I just can't see why. On the one hand, I agree that it is a bit overhated. I quite enjoy racing on the track, and the space station idea isn't the worst one in the world. Unfortunately, it has got some strong competition, and I do think it is the weakest weakest of the 8 Deluxe Rainbow Road selection. 3DS and Wii Rainbow Road are some of the best tracks in the franchise, and N64 Rainbow Road looks phenomenal and is a huge improvement over the original. I could see an argument for SNES Rainbow Road being worse than 8, but the more vibrant colors honestly make me like SNES more. Still, like I said, I agree 8 Rainbow Road is certainly overhated because it is a solid track, but I do think it is the worst Rainbow Road in 8. Another person campaigning for an underrated track is Tabby Thing, who says, DS Mario Circuit is a top 5 track in the game. I mean, it's alright, like... I definitely think this is way too high. It's a decent track, but I wouldn't even say it's the best Mario circuit in the game. Wait, why am I showing footage of this one? This one's awful. I'd probably put it smack dab in the center of a tier list because I think it's a bit too generic to rank that highly. Now, luckily, you all did a lot better than me when it came to not just making your hot takes about tracks, so we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between track and non-track hot takes. PB Crunch 15 says, all the racer characters should have the same stats, so someone can play as their favorite character, for example, Isabel, and not have to worry about it being worse than the others. I'm looking at you, Yoshi. On the one hand, I sort of understand where this one is coming from. Unlike a game like Smash, for example, character movesets don't really change at all here. Sure, there are a few unique tricking animations, but most of the time you pick a character, it's because you like them as a character rather than their moveset. So I can see the reasoning why you may want them to just be aesthetic tweaks, but I also can't really agree. Yes, it is super annoying seeing armies of people using the exact same combo, but I think it's more than fair to give some variety of playstyles, even if they are subtle. Plus, the game is balanced enough to where you can easily win with any character. Really, only time trial world records are going to be character limited. So in my opinion, just don't even worry about this and play who you like. Plus it's extra embarrassing for the people tryharding Mario Kart when they lose. All right, back to the tracks. Mr. C Animation 69 says, The Tour City courses were actually quite enjoyable to play on. It felt refreshing driving on different parts of the tracks all three laps. Specifically, Berlin Byways and Bangkok Rush are super underrated. So as I've clearly stated already, I disagree with this and find most cities to be pretty bad. I also gotta say that the two chosen here are probably some of the lower end ones for me, especially Bangkok. Now with that being said, I can sort of understand the reasoning. I do think it's cool how they change up each lap, 
overlap, and it was a great way to adapt all versions of the track from Tor. But the actual places we're driving are just not that exciting. There's so much open space, and the aesthetics between the tracks don't feel different enough. So while I'm happy you can enjoy these, I don't think I ever will. Sticking with some Booster Course stuff, Yumutu says, I actually prefer the Booster Course Pass aesthetic to the base games. While the graphic quality is lower, the more vibrant colors and lighting is something I prefer over something more realistic. Yeah, that one's interesting. I do not see how you could genuinely say the Booster Course Pass's graphics are better. Base game Mario Kart 8 is one of the best looking games Nintendo has ever made, and I think it struck a perfect balance between realism and cartooniness. I think most of the Booster Course Pass just leans way too far into the cartoony direction and ends up looking bad because of it. There are some exceptions, like Waluigi Pinball and the Rainbow Road still look great, but no, I think the overall BCP package is far worse than the original game graphically. Speaking of DLC, Ethan Huddleston says, The scumminess of it is crazy. Base game on Wii U, DLC for that, all of it ported, then more DLC. The scumminess of porting it with the DLC is the worst. Okay, I don't really get what they're saying. I think they're saying that they don't like how this is a port that got DLC, and to that, I disagree again. I think the idea is also that people want Mario Kart 9, but honestly, I'm good to wait until the next console. While the BCP wasn't quite on the quality of the base game, they were still great additions to the game. I know a lot of people find DLC scummy, but in this case, it doesn't feel that way to me. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was a more than complete package at launch, and the DLC just added a lot of bonus content. I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. Break and Build says, Fire Protection is good. <laughs> Netherite Ingots 5896 says, While the new battle courses are amazing, I do miss the Mario Kart 8 old battle courses. Moo Moo Meadows and Toad Harbor were so much fun looping around the course with the lead. I wish Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would have kept them. You know, I think this exact comment is listed under the definition of insanity. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. At least they aren't saying the Mario Kart 8 battle tracks were better than the Deluxe selection. If you didn't know, in the Wii U release of the game, they were too lazy to make actual battle maps, so they just reused tracks, and it was horrible. I mean, even this comment kind of points out the issue. The fact that if you get the lead, you could just loop around the course so no one can catch you. Genuinely, I wouldn't even want these to be options because you know people online would be the worst in Selecto sometimes. Moo Moo Meadows and Toad Harbor may be great tracks, but they do not need to be near battle mode. Blooper2088 says, Blooper should have not been a bad item, but rather a bad playable driver. Hmm, funny you would say that. Honestly though, I think Blooper would be a funny character, so sure, why not? Daymare19 says, SNES Bowser Castle 3 sucks. Okay, here's my explanation. The track might look good visually, but it's not great. The track layout is weird, and the main point that completely ruins it is, it's way, way, way too open. That isn't a castle. It's Bowser's Beach House. It is literally not a castle. Okay, I'll be honest. I just included this so I could scream. But I can kind of see what they're saying. They think the castle stages should be a bit more enclosed. And you know what? I agree with that. But I have to disagree with this track sucking. I think it's important to consider the original version of this track was on the SNES, so obviously it's a bit wonkier than a normal track nowadays. Despite that, I think they did a great job adapting this to Mario Kart 8 by adding some anti-gravity and a lot of elevation changes. Do I think it's as good as Mario Kart 8's Bowser's Castle, or heck, most Bowser's Castles in the Mario Kart series? No, but since this is on top of a base game Bowser's Castle, I think this is fine. Skategoat5266 says, Hot take, I'm glad they added Peachette instead of Batman. Sean O'Reilly Cork says, I much prefer the tracks without or with limited anti-gravity. It feels a lot more like driving in a lived-in real place than a solely abstract track. Anti-gravity being Mario Kart 8's main gimmick, it's safe to say that this is a pretty hot take. Personally, once again, I have to disagree. I love anti-gravity as a mechanic as it opens up so many more possibilities for the track design. I always jump to Shy Guy Falls as an example because it's so cool driving up and down the waterfalls. There are so many fantastic examples of anti-gravity throughout the game, and I think it just makes Mario Kart 8 a better game in general. But I do think it's fair enough to not want it in every track, so the fact that there are plenty of non-anti-gravity tracks is good too. But for the final hot take of the video, we have Terminal64 who says, I honestly kind of miss when there was only one item slot in the original Mario Kart 8, and holding an item behind you took up the slot. It was kind of a better risk and reward system that punished higher placements. While I somewhat understand where this one is coming from, I definitely feel like the double item system is just better. It makes the races far more chaotic as there's now twice the items flying around. Plus I'd still say it's perfectly balanced as second place for example could easily get enough red shells to tear through the first place's defenses. And this also adds another element of strategy since you can't use your second item until you use your first, so you have to try and figure out when is the best time to use both. So overall, I think the double item system is far better than the single. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you love Amsterdam Drift and hate me for calling the cities bad? Let me know in the comments. I think you guys did a great job with the hot takes this episode. I wasn't planning on including this many, but you guys had so many pretty interesting ones, even if I disagreed with almost all of them. But before we go, I gotta make sure to thank the members being Ryan, Describ, Jorge Hernandez, Belandor, Puggles Are Fun, Trader Mo, Diluted Colors, Void Eleven, Cinder CC, MRM, Shrugface Uwu, Jade Avery, Prunzel Clone, Thicky Reiki, SJ100, Ungenio TM, Gnarled, CW McCain, Tim, 
Dibby, Hyper Saint, Jube Tube, Z, Tesseract, Maker, Nuclear, Mr. McMahon 5702, I am not Denny BG, Sebi, Hippo the Potamus, Thick Rib, Number One Daniel Wee Lover, Jameson Pageson, Wilbur, Golden Sand Slash 15, Frost, Stuffy Ant, Just X, Hezekiah, Konkanut, Keep, and Christian Flattery Sequel Edition. But anyways, Dry Bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.